Han, an experienced automotive technician, was devastated when a tragic car accident took away his beloved granddaughter, Sasha. As he opened her casket during the funeral, he was taken aback by what he discovered. Ron had dedicated his life to his craft, approaching retirement when the tragedy struck. He had always been proud of his son, who followed in his footsteps and displayed a natural talent for mechanical work. His son pursued an education in the field and found success for himself. During his son's journey, he met a remarkable woman, and together they welcomed a beautiful baby girl into their lives. The presence of this young family brought immense joy to Ron, despite the loss of his wife. With his love for working with his hands and a hobby of repairing vintage cars, Ron found solace and purpose in his downtime. Moreover, he relished the opportunity to share his passion with his granddaughter, who was gradually developing an interest in his car repair hobby. Passing down his knowledge to the younger generation brought him profound satisfaction. In addition to the bonding moments spent with Sasha, Ron cherished the regular family gatherings that involved his son and daughter-in-law. Sharing meals together, they found comfort and support in each other's company. Ron's role as a grandfather and mentor gave him a sense of purpose and fulfillment, allowing him to nurture his family connections and continue his passion for automotive work. However, tragedy struck when Sasha's life was abruptly cut short due to the car accident. Ron's world was shattered, and his grief was immeasurable. As he faced the heart-wrenching task of opening Sasha's casket during her funeral, he encountered something that left him profoundly shocked. The family had enjoyed a close and happy bond until a tragic car crash forever altered their lives. On that fateful day, Ron had picked up Sasha from school and brought her back to his place. They spent time together in the garage, with Ron engrossed in his latest project while Sasha eagerly shared every detail of her school day. However, as the afternoon wore on and Ron's son failed to arrive to pick up Sasha for dinner, concern began to creep into Ron's mind. Wanting to shield the young and innocent seven-year-old from unnecessary worry, Ron brought her into the house and prepared a simple meal of hot dogs for them to share. Just as they settled in the kitchen, Ron received the dreaded phone call. His son and daughter-in-law had tragically lost their lives in a car accident, a mere two hours prior. The news shattered their lives, leaving Sasha orphaned and Ron grieving the loss of his only child. Despite the devastation, Ron and Sasha found solace in the fact that they still had each other. Ron was overwhelmed with joy upon discovering that he had been designated as Sasha's legal guardian. His son had taken the responsible step of officially documenting this arrangement through a will soon after becoming a father. As the lawyers reviewed the case, it became evident that Sasha was to live under Ron's care. In a matter of days, Ron was appointed as Sasha's legal guardian, bringing significant changes to both their daily lives. Sasha moved in with her grandfather, necessitating a change of schools. Ron's plans for retirement were indefinitely put on hold as he adjusted his finances to meet the demands of full-time child care. It was an incredibly challenging period for both Ron and Sasha as they navigated this new chapter in their lives, filled with heartache and uncertainty. Fortunately, Ron and Sasha had each other to lean on during this difficult time. Ron had previously experienced the loss of his wife, so he understood the depths of grief. On the other hand, Sasha, having never faced such a loss before, needed substantial support and reassurance from Ron. The community at their school also rallied around Sasha, offering their help and solidarity. All these factors played a vital role in Ron and Sasha's healing journeys and even led them to establish a new tradition. Around the time of the car crash that took Sasha's parents, Ron and Sasha began taking walks together, engaging in conversations with their neighbors. It became too painful for them to remain at home during the hours between school and dinner, as it reminded them of that tragic day. Ron recognized the positive impact of the friendship Sasha was forming and decided to embrace the camaraderie. Thus, their afternoon walks became a cherished ritual. Regardless of the circumstances, Ron and Sasha would embark on their walks, providing solace and a sense of routine. During one of these walks, on a gloomy and rainy day, Sasha's sharp ears detected a faint whimper. Intrigued, she paused and listened intently. 
A few steps ahead, Ron turned to see what had captured Sasha's attention. She ventured off the sidewalk towards a cluster of bushes, and Ron followed, curious to discover the source of her fascination. To their astonishment, they discovered a small dog huddled in the foliage. The dog had a gray and white coat, matted fur, and appeared emaciated and trembling. It seemed like a serendipitous encounter. Approaching the dog with utmost gentleness, Sasha and Ron drew closer, observing its fragile state. The dog was clearly malnourished and shivering. Ron felt a sense of connection, as if this dog was meant to enter their lives. Removing his jacket, he carefully wrapped the dog inside, offering warmth and comfort. Together, Ron, Sasha, and the newfound canine companion continued their walk, united by an unexpected bond. They took the pup to the veterinarian to determine if it was a stray or had an owner. The dog had no tags or microchip, and its unkempt appearance suggested it had been abandoned or on its own for a long time. Sasha had grown deeply attached to the dog, naming it Pepper due to the color of its fur. Pepper quickly responded to its new name, leading Ron and the vet to jokingly remark that Pepper had chosen them as its family. Thus, Ron and Sasha's family expanded to include the loyal four-legged companion. For several years, they lived together happily, providing each other with love, care, and a sense of security. However, tragedy struck their family once again. Shortly after Sasha turned 10, Ron granted her permission to take Pepper on walks by herself. Sasha had proven herself responsible and trustworthy, and Ron believed she was ready for a bit more independence. On the day after Sasha's 10th birthday, she set out with Pepper for a pleasant afternoon walk strangely, they didn't return home in time for dinner. Ron found himself experiencing panic and dread, reminiscent of the past. He anxiously awaited their arrival, contemplating various scenarios, had Sasha taken a different route and gotten lost, or perhaps lost track of time while chatting with friends? Ron tried to push away the worst-case scenarios, but as the minutes ticked by, it became increasingly challenging. Setting the table for dinner, Ron sat anxiously, hoping for Sasha's safe return. Then, the phone rang, confirming his worst fears. Poor, sweet Sasha had been involved in an accident. While stooped down to clean up after Pepper, she was struck by a passing vehicle. Pepper, fortunately, remained unharmed, but Sasha had fallen and hit her head on the concrete, just like her father, changing their lives in an instant. With Sasha gone, Ron felt as though his world was crumbling around him, consumed by inconsolable grief upon receiving the devastating news. Understanding his situation, some compassionate neighbors who knew his story rushed to his aid, providing support and assistance. They managed to collect Pepper from the authorities and brought the faithful dog back to Ron, reuniting the last remaining members of their shattered family. Pepper became a source of comfort, a reminder of Sasha's presence. One kind neighbor took on the responsibility of caring for and walking Pepper in the days following the tragic incident. As time passed, the inevitable funeral approached, serving as a way to lay Sasha to rest. Ron, still engulfed in the fog of grief, had little involvement in the funeral arrangements. However, there was one thing he insisted upon, having Pepper by his side. The community rallied behind him, understanding the significance of the bond between Ron and the dog. With kindness, they sat behind Ron and Pepper during the service. When the time came to say their final goodbyes to Sasha before the coffin was sealed, something astonishing occurred. Ron noticed Pepper standing on its hind legs, barking furiously near the coffin. Overwhelmed with the need to let Pepper see Sasha one last time, Ron opened the coffin, allowing the dog to sniff her. And that's when he witnessed something miraculous, the faint but unmistakable rise and fall of Sasha's breathing chest. Ron's shock turned into sheer disbelief as he screamed for help, frantically attempting to awaken Sasha. At first, the funeral guests were appalled, thinking Ron's grief had driven him to madness. However, as they witnessed Sasha slowly regain consciousness, they too shared in the astonishment. It turned out that Sasha had been in a brief coma since the car accident but was otherwise alive and well. Filled with an overwhelming mix of emotions, Ron, Pepper, and Sasha returned home, 
knowing that they had been given a second chance. Together, they faced the future, cherishing their unbreakable bond and vowing to be there for each other. It was an extraordinary ending to their tumultuous journey, leaving everyone amazed. What are your thoughts on a close family member trying to wake the deceased during their own funeral? How would you react to such an astonishing surprise? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and until next time. It was a sad day for Mr. David Miller's family, when family, friends and neighbors gathered to bid farewell to a good man. They were shocked and a wolf came to his coffin and bit him by the neck. The reasons behind the wolf's behavior will shock you even more. Mr. David Miller is an old man who lives in McCall, Idaho. He grew up in this town. He never really left here, except that when he joined the army, after several years of service, he had retired and lived alone in this town. Mr. Miller lives on the outskirts of town and always sits on his porch at night watching the sunset. Old David likes to be alone. He is kind to his neighbors, but he never lets anyone get too close to him. His only companion was a little boy, Williams, who lived by the side of the road. The old man affectionately called him, Williams. He liked to come and hear Mr. David tell stories about the battlefield. In his time, David was a doctor. He helped carry the wounded soldiers off the battlefield, and he received emergency treatment when necessary. After almost a lifetime of war and hard service, he returned home to retire, but he never missed the exciting scenes on the battlefield. The old man lived a quiet life with simple habits. He got up for a walk in the morning, drank morning tea, and then spent a day reading on his porch. On some days, he would come to chat, while others, he just sat there. Watch the time go by. People know that he is a quiet man and seldom disturb him. Our story today begins with a popular story. Some people in the town talked about wolves wandering in the nearby forest. David also heard these rumors and decided to stay away from the forest. He was not afraid, but he did not want to have any conflict with wolves or wolf poachers. He was too weak. If he did, he had to run away, so he wouldn't take any risks at all. After all, he is very content to stay on his porch, and the old man thinks that all life, including wild animals, should be protected. When some of his neighbors decided to hunt wolves for their safety, he did not support their decision and made his views clear. Unfortunately, they didn't listen to him and continued their search. One night, Mr. Miller was sitting on his porch and heard some rustling sound in his tool shed. At first he was not sure whether he had heard or imagined the sound, but he finally picked up the flashlight and looked at the shed. What he saw was completely unexpected, and a big wolf sat quietly between some boxes. He was a little scared at first, but he soon realized that the wolf was hardly aggressive, and then he realized why, because it had a gunshot wound on its leg and it was bleeding. David glanced at the wolf and thought that the animal had little strength to move, let alone jump up to attack him. He could not let it die like this. Just as he was about to approach, the man heard some noise. Someone was knocking at the door. The wolf growled, and David told it to be quiet. Of course, the animal could not understand him, but he believed it would remain quiet. The old man left the shed and closed the door behind him. Three young men stood on his porch and asked him if he saw the wolf running past, because he was usually sitting outside reading or reading. Mr. Miller replied that he had been busy in the house. I didn't see anything suspicious, and let the young man continue his search. The old man opened the door carefully and found the wolf right where he left. As he approached, the wolf was motionless, breathing hard and sobbing painfully. He seemed to know that the man wanted to help him. The former doctor examined his leg, pulled the bullet out, and bandaged the wound with clean gauze. For the next few days, he fed the wolf in his shed to treat the wound. Over the past few days, the two have established a deep bond. Mr. Miller is now with the wolf at night, stroking it to make sure it is comfortable, and he is careful not to let his neighbors see the wolf. For a person who likes to be alone, this is not difficult to achieve. One night, the wolf felt strong enough to walk around, 
so Mr. Miller took it into the woods and let it out. The predator hesitated and then ran away. Their story was only a brief experience in their lives, but soon it became more things. Every few weeks, they would meet at night in the old man's shed, where he would feed the wolf. Over time, his visits became less frequent, but the meeting never stopped completely. Old David knew that life was back to normal, and he thought it was supposed to be. Mr. Miller usually buys things by himself, and on a calm morning a few months after his first encounter with the wolf, he feels very tired and asks his young friend Will for help. He wrote a list and gave it to the young boy, who went to the store to buy the groceries he need. He was happy to help his friend and promised to come back soon, when the rescue workers arrived, they were too late to save David. The man was no longer breathing. When he was transferred to the local hospital, he was confirmed to be dead. The whole town was sad to hear that old David was dead. Although he was a loner most of the time, he was a stable figure in the community. He was friendly to many people on many occasions, and on the day of his funeral. Family and friends gathered to pay their last respects to Mr. Miller. When the eulogy was read, the coffin was placed in front of it, and suddenly something incredible happened. A wolf from somewhere entered the church and began to run to the coffin. It didn't pull or drag the man, it just stood still for nearly a minute, and it bit him with its fangs. After that, he let go of old David and ran back to the forest. It is hard to believe that his family wants to know what happened. A confused doctor explained that the wolf bit him to relieve the suffocation of the old man, and it saved the old man's life. When the wolf bit the old man's throat, the old man's respiratory tract was opened by it. Mr. Miller didn't die. It is experiencing anaphylactic shock. There was wheat bran in the French toast he ate that morning. He had a severe allergic reaction, which closed his respiratory tract and made him look dead. Obviously, Little Will didn't know about his allergies. The last time he went to the supermarket, he brought him white bread. When old David woke up, his family told him what had happened. He kept asking about the wolf. A few weeks later, Mr. Miller came home from the hospital, hoping to see his friend again, and his prayers were answered. On a quiet night, when he saw the wolf looking at him from the porch in the dark, he rushed to the wolf and hugged his loyal friend, thanking him for saving his life. The animal gently licked his human friend's face before running into the woods. Mr. Miller did not sigh again, but he never forgot it. In this amazing story, what do you think happens when the wolf bites Dave by the throat? Did you guess he had an allergic reaction? At the funeral of his granddaughter, suspecting something was wrong, the old man approached the coffin and heard a scream. The final farewell of a young life, sadness and pain gripped those present. But this inconsolable grandfather and his dog sensed something strange in the air. He decided to investigate by getting closer to the coffin and heard a deep scream. What he would discover at that moment would leave you in tears. If you want to know, stay with me. Fernando Garcia is a 60-year-old man who has suffered a hard blow in his life. He lost his only son and daughter-in-law in a tragic car accident, leaving behind an orphaned little girl named Blanca, who fortunately wasn't with them during the accident. The man was devastated because, like any parent, he loved his son deeply, who was also the living reminder of his late wife. However, not everything was lost for him because his granddaughter, a cheerful seven-year-old girl, quickly became the light of his life. Since then, this kind-hearted grandfather has raised Blanca as if she were his own daughter and has established a very close relationship with her and loving towards her before the accident that left him without his son and daughter-in-law. Fernando was a cheerful and optimistic man, always surrounded by friends. He had worked his whole life as a mechanic and enjoyed helping people with their car problems. However, after the accident, he underwent a significant change in his personality. He became a more serious, reflective, and sorrowful man. But he still remained a kind, affectionate person dedicated to his granddaughter. Despite the challenges he has faced, he continues to be a strong and brave man who has overcome adversity and become a father figure for Blanca. And she, in turn, is a very happy and affectionate child towards him. They often spend their time together, 
whether playing in the park or simply chatting at home. Fernando has done everything possible to give Blanca a normal and love-filled life, and she reciprocates that love wholeheartedly. Furthermore, this grandfather has ensured that his beloved granddaughter receives a proper education and has supported her in all her activities, from ballet to school. However, there was still something missing in their lives, and it would soon arrive from an unexpected source. Unexpectedly, it was a rainy day when this little family was returning from school. The wind was blowing strongly, and the leaves were falling from the trees. As they walked through the streets towards their home, they never arrived. They heard a soft whimpering nearby, a sad and desperate sound that caught their attention. Curiously, they approached and there they found a puppy lying on the ground, covered in mud and injured. The little dog was shivering from the cold, with its hind leg wounded and bloody. Its brown eyes were filled with fear and pain, and its thin and fragile body seemed like it couldn't bear any more. Fernando and Blanca felt moved by seeing the poor abandoned animal. Without hesitation, Blanca approached and picked it up gently in her arms, trying to comfort it with her soft voice. Everything will be okay, little friend. We're going to help you, right, Grandpa? The man looked at the dog sadly. He was incapable of leaving it in that state. The puppy clung to the girl with all its strength, as if knowing that it had found someone who would save it. Blanca softly caressed the puppy with tears in her eyes. She couldn't believe that someone could have abandoned such a sweet and vulnerable animal. Together, they decided to take the puppy to a veterinary clinic to get it treated, the dog was promptly attended to by the veterinarian, and Blanca and Fernando actively participated in its recovery. That moment marked the beginning of a beautiful friendship between the three of them, and they named him Tico. Seeing the bond that had formed with the animal, Fernando decided to adopt him and bring him home with them. From the moment Fernando and Blanca adopted Tico, he became an important member of the family. His love and loyalty were evident from the start, and he quickly became a great source of comfort for this broken family. Tico was a faithful companion who was always there for them, even in the toughest times. Over time, Tico became a strong and healthy dog. He loved accompanying them on their daily walks and playing in the park with Blanca. His presence filled the home of this family with life, and his contagious joy made everyone feel better. Tico's unconditional love was evident in every gaze, bark, and lick on their faces. His presence had made a significant impact on the lives of Fernando, Blanca, and their family. He gave them a reason to smile and enjoy life. Several unforgettable and happy years passed for these three. However, this story was about to take a tragic turn. It was a normal day for Fernando, who was working in his vehicle workshop while Tico was sitting in a corner, watching his owner and friend work. At that moment, news arrived that this grandfather never expected to hear again in his life. He was informed that his granddaughter had suffered a terrible accident while playing with her friends in the park. A ball had escaped onto the street, and without looking both ways, she went to retrieve it. Unfortunately, she was hit by a vehicle and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. The doctors did everything they could to save her, but ultimately, she was declared dead. The news hit Fernando and Tico hard. The man felt completely shattered, unable to believe that he had once again lost a loved one. Tico, on the other hand, was confused and sad. He couldn't understand why his friend hadn't come home yet and why his owner couldn't stop crying. That day, Fernando once again plunged into deep sorrow. He couldn't bear the thought of living without Blanca. He felt alone and empty, and the pain was unbearable. Tico, for his part, stuck close to Fernando and couldn't stop crying, as if he knew that something terrible had happened. Note, I noticed there was a change from Tico to Kiko in the text. Since Tico was mentioned earlier, I assumed it was the correct name for consistency. Something terrible had happened. The next morning, the man had to be strong once again to attend his granddaughter's funeral. And, as he couldn't leave him behind, he brought his faithful dog with him to bid a final farewell to his beloved granddaughter. Blanca's funeral was a deeply emotional moment for both the man and his dog. 
The loss of the girl had been devastating for them, and they were immersed in profound sadness. Fernando couldn't stop crying like a little child, and Tico followed his every step. Clearly, the dog could already understand what was happening. However, as they said goodbye to the girl and the coffin was being closed, Tico sensed something that made him start growling and barking insistently. Fernando tried to calm him down, but Tico continued barking forcefully. Confused, the man approached the coffin to see what was happening. It was at that moment that he heard a very faint cry coming from inside the coffin. Instinctively, Fernando felt that something was wrong. He shouted, my Blanca is alive. I have to get her out of there. With determination, he attempted to open the coffin. However, the people present, thinking that the man was overcome by grief and acting irrationally, tried to stop him. Tico, on the other hand, showed a threatening stance towards them, baring his teeth and not allowing anyone to approach. As Fernando struggled with great effort to open the coffin, he discovered with astonishment that Blanca was indeed alive. His cries of joy and relief joined those of Tico, who had sensed the presence of the girl even before anyone else did. Note, the story took an unexpected turn, and it's important to note that such events are highly unlikely and purely fictional. Tico, unable to contain his excitement, leaped onto the girl with joy and showered her with licks and happy growls. The doctors who had attended to Blanca had made a mistake in their diagnosis and had mistakenly declared her dead. The little girl had suffered a brain injury that left her in a state of catalepsy, a biological condition in which a person appears motionless and without vital signs. This moment was a miracle for Fernando and Tico, who couldn't believe that Blanca was alive. Tico had been Blanca's guardian and protector, his instincts and love for her had driven him to act in such a way, saving her life. The people present at the funeral were astonished and moved by what had happened, and some began referring to Tico as a miraculous dog due to his role in Blanca's rescue. From that moment on, Tico became an even more important member of the family, and his love and loyalty towards them were never questioned again. The story of Fernando, Blanca, and Tico teaches us the importance of love and loyalty in our lives. Loss and pain are inevitable, but we should always have faith and hope in difficult times. Tico's unconditional love for his family demonstrates that animals are capable of loving and protecting just like humans would. This was today's video. We hope you really liked it, but now it's your turn to answer these questions and participate in the discussion. What feelings did this story evoke in you? Do you think love and family have a healing power in the soul? Whales are massive mammals that dominate the oceans, but sometimes, they can run into trouble. Although it has no natural enemies, many human activities have extremely serious impacts on it. The humpback became trapped, and a diver who passed by, regardless of his own safety, freed it from its restraints, and then, the unexpected happened. At night, a lone humpback whale swam close to the shoreline, and at first the animal seemed quite at ease gliding peacefully. However, the darkness meant it, couldn't see the obstacles in the water, and suddenly, the huge animal became entangled in the rope and it began writhing around, struggling incessantly, hoping to free itself from its restraints. But its efforts were in vain, hours passed, and the whale still could only stay in that place, waiting for the illusory rescue. James, an experienced diver, had recently joined a team who had organized their first safari, and this safari involved something very unique. In the early morning, the volunteers were notified that they were going to help something. They were briefly told that it was an animal. Everyone was curious and worried. After all, what animal needs a team to help? Certainly not a simple barnacle problem. The team took their fastest boat and drove to the designated location. It was about seven miles off the coast of San Francisco, and they were shocked and they saw something hidden in the waves. It was a whale, it was bobbing its head up and down, its eyes were pointing at the crowd, obviously the whale was watching them, probably wondering if these people were malicious. What happened was that the day before the crab traps were set, humpback whales were caught in a series of traps, which collectively weighed about 3,000 pounds, and whose weight acted like an anchor, pulling the whale underwater. Unlike fish, whales cannot breathe underwater. 
As mammals, they need to swim up regularly for oxygen. Although the humpback continues to surface to breathe, its strength is clearly weakening. The guy has clearly worn out over time, and it's a miracle he's still alive after all he's been under the weight for so long. As the crew watched the whales skim the water, still joking leisurely, alarm bells rang in James's head, not long ago, on a boat in another place, he witnessed something he'll never let go of. A poor blue whale, also a victim of multiple attacks by sharks. Now, James is once again in shark-infested waters, where there are plenty of predators lurking near the shoreline this season, and not only is this whale trapped and unable to defend itself, and it's injured. The blood that comes out is like oil leaking into the water, it will spread quickly, and dye the sea area with a coveted smell. James knew that nearby sharks would target the stranded whale. James thought he had to do something to help the whale. There was not much time left, and there was only one thing he could do, jump into the water and free the whale from the trap as soon as possible. James put on his dive gear, and as he prepared, he spoke his mind, and the other divers listened attentively, they trusted this man, he was experienced and of high character, and they admired his demeanor. Looking down at the blue water, James was fully aware of the possibility that sharks were nearby, and the thought of a large carnivorous predator, even a pack, stalking around was enough to make one shudder, even in such a gigantic spirit. Under pressure, James still did not give up his thoughts. James believes that his bravery will win. He does not meditate too much and pay attention to potential dangers and his own situation. He wants to see the bright side and he wants the whales to be free. Just before James set off, he pulled a crew member to his side and warned him about the potential threat of sharks and how to deal with them. James knew how to respond to threats, but he wasn't sure the others knew, and he had to give them a serious warning not to lose their minds and lose their way if a great white shark suddenly appeared. And let them follow them closely and maintain eye contact, because humans are a non-food source, and as long as sharks do not regard humans as ordinary fish, they can also serve as a warning in some cases. After a quick scan of the waters around the boat, James turned his gaze to the whales, and so far, no sharks appear to have emerged. With his hands firmly on the protective gear, James stood on the boat, with the others, and in a few moments he was in the water, joined by all the other divers a few minutes later. James swam up to the whale, followed by his fellow divers, and as he swam closer he noticed the whale's head was above the water, it was staring straight at him, and although it desperately needed help, it seemed to distrust humans. The closer James got to it, the more he could see the sadness and weariness in the guy's eyes, the kind of emotion any intelligent animal would express James empathizes with the humpback whale, which is smart enough for him to understand the danger it's in, which might view rescuers as a potential threat. In order to appease the humpback, James stretched out a hand and tried to stroke the side of the whale. He said calmly, I am here to help you, and I will not hurt you. The rope was embedded in the whale's skin, no wonder the whale couldn't break free, the rope sank so deep it caused a cut, the first reaction of the whale when it was trapped was, to run around and try to shake the rope off but it tightened the rope instead, after struggling all night, the humpback was caught in more traps. Judging by the tightness of the rope, the whale must have been stressed, and the crab trap was a mile long. Out of sympathy for the whale, James began to cut the rope, and as one rope after another was cut, the whale was one step closer to freedom. The other divers did their best to help James and avoid harming the whale. Occasionally, James would turn to look for nearby sharks, reminding divers to be on the lookout, and when he was satisfied with their caution, he would resume cutting the line. He encouraged other divers to continue their efforts, and finally the whale was released. When the last rope released the whale, the whale dived again. The divers cheered and congratulated each other, and they successfully implemented the plan. The team members are proud of James. Not every diver will risk his life to save the whale. James' heroic behavior is undoubtedly great. But that wasn't the most surprising thing that happened that day, it was the whale's reaction. Almost immediately after the whale was released, it returned to the place where the humans rescued it. By this time, the others had returned to the boat, but James was still in the water.
Watching the humpback from a distance, it appeared to be diving deeper, and as the massive creature swam up, he made a beeline for James. When the whale finally came to the surface, it began to give James a gentle nudge. It showed its sincerest thanks with a playful swim. The large animal swam in a figure eight and even spread its fins, trying to hug its savior. The players around James couldn't believe their eyes, a wild whale was playing with a person, like an old friend for many years. For James, this will be an unforgettable memory, a hymn to the friendship between animals and humans, and a spark of the beautiful collision between nature and humanity.